Hey, it's Stefan here, and what I want to talk about today is two trends that I see emerging and then probably converging in 2021. And actually, not probably, they are converging right now. So the first is social gaming. If you look at Roblox, for example, which is a gaming platform marketplace uh, that has become wildly popular, if you're not familiar with it, you can go to uh, Roblox, R-O-B-L-O-X dot com to check it out. Uh, they just raised another hundred and I think fifty million dollars. It was uh, in at a four billion dollar plus valuation. They're planning on having uh, doing their IPO in twenty twenty one. They were going to do it in twenty twenty, but they moved it back. And the huge thing with Roblox is social gaming. So it's basically a, a like an open gaming platform where uh, developers can build games on their their architecture and infrastructure, and then put them into like the uh, the ecosystem, and people play the different games. Uh, what's really cool is that the people, the developers get a share of revenue based on people who are playing. Uh, it's a lot of kids playing it, and the kids are actually developing and building their own games as well. But there are crazy stats on it. It has something like 150 million plus active users, and like half of all kids in the U.S. have played a game on Roblox before, and it's just uh, really booming. But, you know, but, but again, the big thing with Roblox is the social aspect of it, right? And when you look at that, it's actually far from uh, like unique. So for example, Rec Room is something on uh, virtual reality on Oculus Quest and things like that. And it's a social gaming platform, kind of similar to what Roblox does, but within the world of Rec Room. Uh, and they just raised, I think it was 20 million in their Series C. And they're expecting, you know, continued growth and lots of money. The, the, the thing is, money is coming into these, these ventures, right? Um, but we can take that and then look at how Discord, which is a, you know, chat server for people who play video games and esports and things like that, uh, Discord is now valued at seven billion dollars. There is uh, I'm looking off a list, so if I, I'm scrolling through because I make my notes here, uh, Skills, which is a mobile esports company uh, that just started trading on the New York Stock Exchange and went public. Uh, they powered something like two billion tournaments, including 500 million paid entry tournaments, and they facilitated 1.6 billion dollars in entry fees and generated uh, 225 million dollars in revenue. So again, this is another one that is a um, like a, a platform that lets friends and family sort of compete for cash and prizes through esports and things of that nature. Uh, then you look at the fact that Snapchat is kind of partnering with uh, Unity Engines, which is a gaming engine, to kind of bring more of a social aspect to games that are run on the Unity platform. Uh, there's Navi, which is an esports club that just sort of created a whole project where you can sell items from different platforms and games across different marketplaces, like basically doing trading and in game sales and assets for virtual items, you're paying real money and creates real money, real value for virtual assets. Something that also happens with Roblox, by the way. Roblox has its own in-game economy and it has um, you know, people trading and buying. There's Robux, which is the money in there. But the, it ends up, what's interesting here is the uh, the virtual kind of game currencies that become valuable in real life. This isn't new. I mean, I played EverQuest back in the day, which is an MMORPG, massive multiplayer online role-playing game. And you could sell items in the game for real cash. People did it on eBay back then. They could eBay off their characters. And then with World of Warcraft and others, like people have still been doing that, but it's becoming more and more popular and mainstream. And that's what's kind of interesting too. Um, gosh, there's another one. What is it? Uh, oh, Boom TV. I read about that. Basically, is a um, another sort of a, like like esports platform that helps people to. Um, like uh, compete and, and sort of it, it does it on it focuses on less professional esports athletes and more collegiate and high school level. Uh, they just raised another ten million dollars in a Series A. Well, they did it in June, and then Intel just invested in them. Um, and I know there's even one more I'm not thinking of right here. It's probably in my notes, but where they uh, just got another like two point five. Who was it at two point? I don't know. Another company basically that raised two point five billion. The point is this is happening with. So what what is it? It's like esports and social gaming. Um, all combining. And then the social aspect and where the convergence comes in is really interesting because the second trend that I really want to talk about is um, kind of live streamed social shopping. So I read an article in Inc. a little while ago about this and how social shopping is a, or they call it live stream shopping, is a $63 billion industry in China, but it's just starting to get catch a steam in the US, which makes sense because essentially this is like QVC for. Um, you know, but on Facebook Live or on Snapchat or other places, including Amazon. So that's what was interesting as I started researching this. Um, you know, Walmart is partner of TikTok to do a live stream shopping event where 
different like TikTok personalities will be like shopping and buying stuff on Walmart and then sharing those deals on TikTok, on TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> um, you know, but there's also uh, like a bunch of other, what, what's the other one I found that was really interesting? Um, oh yeah, there's a company called Ship Loop, which is basically where people kind of watch uh, creators showing off things that they they like, like or that they've made and then people can buy on the app. So it's like kind of QVC live selling. Amazon literally has this with uh, Amazon Live, which is where you can essentially live stream or do live videos showing off your objects and items and selling them. Um, and both, you know, Amazon Talent can do that, but also brands are able to do it through the Amazon Live creator platform. Um, Facebook, by the way, started doing this in 2018 with Facebook Live Shopping. And uh, there's another company called Pop Shop. So there's a bunch of companies that are doing this where they're essentially selling stuff through live streaming. Right, uh, and then on top of that, beyond selling there, I think the other opportunity with live stream, like I, I kind of they, they call it live stream shopping in some of these articles. I think live stream selling makes more sense because this is like there's these are examples of people selling, but um, I think shopping actually is a big opportunity too. And to back that up, if you actually look at Twitch, which is you know a um, streaming platform uh, originally for gamers, it had a record 1.7 billion hours streamed in November of 2020. Uh, but out of that, the number one segment was the uh, just chatting category of 228 million hours watched, which is up 246% from last year. And a lot of what they're doing there is actually people talking about like um, chatting, beauty, makeup, and things of that nature. So from this Venture Beat article that I found, I can quote where it says, women are more than 40% of the gaming lifestyle scene. Uh, Stream Elements Chief Executive Officer Duran Neer said, that makes live streaming platforms the next frontier for beauty products. Over the past 12 months, we've seen the beauty category on Twitch grow over 260% in terms of hours watched with cosmetic brands like L'Oreal, MAC, M, Hero, and Elf already dipping their toes in the water. So I think, again, there's a cool opportunity there to watch other people shopping and as they live stream or, or for you yourself, right? You could live stream yourself shopping and finding the best deal and price comparing and putting on coupons and put it on Twitch or other places and probably generate a lot of followers from doing that. Um, just in the same way people, I mentioned this to a few of my friends and people say, oh, like Ryan's Toy Reviews, which is on YouTube and um, where this kid like basically unboxes toys and they're making some ungodly amount of money, uh, tens of millions of dollars a, a year, I think even more frankly, um, which is awesome. But yeah, it's kind of like that, but actually live streaming shopping, like turning shopping into a sport just like, uh, you know, gaming has become of esports. In both cases, you're live streaming and there's a social aspect. Um, and same thing with selling too, right? Communicating, chat. So basically, I think you look at the social, socialization may not be the right word because I don't want the connotations of socialism, but essentially there's um, social is, is applying to specific activities and to everything. And you're seeing, uh, you know, social now really converge with shopping and e-commerce in a way that's never been done before. I think really accelerated by COVID-19. Uh, and I think, you know, then even with games and social gaming with the in-game economies and the way people are selling, I think that's where the convergence gets really interesting because you're going to have, um, this blur between shopping, playing and communicating. That's all kind of happening. And the money's there. Again, if you look at the IPOs, you look at the venture capital being raised and invested, um, it's like, it's already happening. The amount of users, this is happening now. So I think there's a lot of interesting opportunities there and, and ways that you could take advantage of the trend for, uh, like I mentioned one, if you could live stream yourself shopping and then you could put in affiliate links and then, you know, people could buy stuff that you find and recommend, right? Or you could do it and then also plug your own stuff or you could get sponsored uh, advertisers to, to sponsor you as you shop for their stuff, right? If you have enough followers, um, it's a really easy, low cost barrier. But as a brand or a company, like trying this QVC model out, right? Going live on Facebook and starting to uh, having some of your inventory, your product, shopping or showing it, sharing it, um, like, uh, like telling about the features and benefits, selling it, telling the story behind it. And then, you know, selling X amount of bottles like, to your followers, whether it was on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or whatever. And, um, you know, and then I think on the gaming side, it's like really just finding ways to, to connect with gamers and, and things. I mean, I get, I, I don't know, just look at opportunities for these in-game economies and, and how those are then being transferred to the outside world. But, um, you know, I don't have like the perfect answer to how this all converges, but I think there's clearly a common thread there. And so these are trends that, you know, I think people who are just interested in the future will find valuable, but also for entrepreneurial type people, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you. So I wanted to share this video. Hopefully you like it. If you do like it or find it interesting or have other trends you want to share that maybe I missed, make sure that you uh, leave a comment and hit the like button, you know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, share this with other people. 
help me get views so I feel motivated to keep making content. That'd be awesome. And uh, hopefully you do enjoy. All right, thanks.